finding a way into abstract drawing and painting doesn't have to be hard. Today I find myself heading back to basics in this studio session, returning to a few simple processes for exploring theory that develops my use of composition, value and colour, and I'll be taking you along the process with me. Stay tuned for next week's video too, where I'll be sharing how I take ideas from these small and medium works on paper to inspire a large abstract piece on canvas. Welcome back to another Paint With Me. If you're new here, my name is Orla and I'm an artist, illustrator and designer with a deep love for painting and the outdoors. Through everything that I do, I'm looking to create more access around art and nature and explore how these two things can work hand in hand to connect people to both places, nature and their own creativity. As we sadly can't always be in and around the places and things that inspire us, I make use of the field research like photos, sketches and videos when I'm back in the studio. To get warmed up in this process, I typically start with thumbnail sketches from reference photos using charcoal. These thumbnails start out as analytical drawings and with these sketches, I'm looking to map the dark areas of the image, which helps me simplify the photo and map what is where so I can better understand what it is I'm looking at. I like to move the photo around and focus in on different areas to inspire a variety of compositions in these thumbnails rather than drawing the same thing four times over. The paintings I create in this session build upon ideas from a previous collaboration exploring the wild land and seascapes of the Orkney Isles. Back in 2021, I was invited to take part in a collaborative residency on Orkney, which is a beautiful archipelago off of the northeastern coast of Scotland. The islands are wild with dramatic cliffs and full of rich history, with many sites that date all the way back to the Neolithic time period. Here I joined composers and musicians from all across the UK and Ireland to research the ancient landscape and history and paint in response to their music and compositions. All the while we were filmed for a documentary on our multidisciplinary collaboration. I'll share some more of this beautiful project later on in the video. Scale is always such an important part of my practice. I like to take small drawings and enlarge them, a theme you'll see throughout today's studio session. I've taken two thumbnail ideas and explored this, filling the pages, and in doing so, I'm pushed to see how I can use pattern or texture to differentiate layers of light and dark value. As a quick summary, value is simply how light or dark a colour is. Doing these sketches in black and white is for me the very first step to mapping the value of a picture before I develop this dark, mid and light into colour. You might have picked up from my past studio sessions that I love exploring ways to loosen up and paint freely. Although I don't put theory front and centre in my practice, having a base grounding is really important to complement an intuitive approach to art. I find myself returning to these kinds of exercises across all stages of my practice, and I'm sure I will always continue to do so as a check-in. Another exercise I often find myself doing when I'm not in the landscape itself is turning the image or sketchbook around and around and using this shift in perspective to begin to abstract the landscape. This couldn't be more simple and is always such a great step to warm into abstracting composition. Flipping something upside down removes the literal understanding of what it is we are drawing. It stops us trying to predict and draw what we expect it to look like and gets us looking more and documenting what we actually see.
This idea of rotating the page is one of my absolute favourites for quickly documenting abstract composition ideas. I make a mark, rotate the page. Make a mark, turn, make a mark, turn. I think the point is not to try and capture everything in front of me, simply note taking the elements that catch my eye and play with those. As you can see, I'm really drawn to texture, pattern, shape and line, and I'm discovering new compositions by playing with these elements. If you'd like to know more about texture and mark making, I've got a free tutorial which goes into more depth playing with a variety of tools and approaches. You'll find this over on my Patreon, the Outdoor Sketchbook Collective, where I share video tutorials, host community meetups and more. Last month I released a paid tutorial, Part 1, An Introduction to Colour, which is followed up this month with Part 2, where we'll be building on that knowledge to develop our own personal palettes. Everything here is centred around my love for play, for freedom, self-expression and community. So if you like my approach to art making and want to be part of the collective, consider checking it out. With plenty of drawing ideas fresh in my hands, I decided to pick six sketches and develop them into painting studies, working on A5 papers. Today I'm working on some beautiful cold pressed 300 GSM watercolour paper. I love this weight as it makes small paintings feel really, really substantial. I've fallen in love with taping the edges of my paperworks, which you'll see across many of my recent videos and paintings on my website. I find the preparation of this taping really meditative and that it helps me to think through what I'll paint in my head a little bit. With these wee ones, I wanted to play with six warm-up sketches in two different formats. I've taped three papers so that the final painting will be a square, and the other three a rectangle. I'm also choosing to work in a limited palette of three colours to represent the three elements of dark, mid and lights that I was exploring in the charcoal value sketches. I've picked out three colours, a dark purple, a lighter blue and a very light pink. Starting out with the deep purple, I began by mapping out loose compositions inspired by the sketches. It's quite simply a process of layering the darks, then the mids, and then the lights, before heading back in with any of those three to bring more definition in the following layers. Like I mentioned before, I love exploring scale not only to push my use of tools, but also a composition. I've decided to work on these four handmade papers, taping the edges and laying down some underpainting bases, one in each of the three colours I'm using in my limited palette. I've also decided to leave one of the four papers as the raw paper so that I can experiment with how the paint reacts. These larger ones are taking ideas from both my charcoal sketches and the small painting sketches. I hop a little bit back and forth between the small ones and the large ones, taking ideas as each set develops. This step always feels magical, like it brings the painting into focus for me. And that is simply by adding the oil pastel at the end. 
pulling out key areas or building in more texture and pattern. I tried my best to match the pastels to the paint colours to keep that limited palette consistency. I've got to say I found it really hard to strip the work back to just three colours, but it was a really valuable exercise to do. To see the final results, I peeled back the tape to get a proper look at the final paintings. I hadn't planned to title any of these works, but decided in the end to do so. Somehow it brings it all together. I like the idea that the title may also spark new ideas for future paintings as well. I've been thinking a lot about how I use words in my practice and inspiration, and how they show up in my painting. I've not found an authentic way to include text within the actual painting in a way that feels meaningful to me, but I've been exploring adding text or titles below the work and today tried using words to surround the painting too. I think this could be a good way to build ideas or stories in the future, or just pull ideas from for more paintings as well. Now time for the final reveal, how these limited colours sit all together and how marks, shapes and compositions travel across small and larger paintings on paper. It's funny that there's always that really messy middle stage when you doubt if you'll ever be able to make the piece work out or not. And for me, the pastel really saved the day with these ones. I love taking a step back from these pieces and seeing the impact they have from a distance and I'm already getting excited for next week's video, where I'll be developing some of these ideas out larger onto canvas. If you'd like more ideas in the meantime for loosening up and finding ways into abstract drawing, why not check out my video all about drawing to moving image, which I'll link above here. As I mentioned earlier, these paintings have been inspired by a research trip to Orkney, where I created a collection of work that responded to contemporary classical compositions. In collaboration with musicians and filmmaker, we created music, art and a documentary which went on to perform at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and Orkney International Science Festival. The project itself explored seafaring connections between Scotland and the further north, inspired by the shared landscapes, folklore and history. I mention this project because today's exercises were centred around the practice and reference imagery that I created and used from this collaboration. And secondly, because a CD that has come from this project has recently just launched. I wanted to give a wee shout out for the album, which I had the pleasure of designing. It's been two years in the making to collate the programme of music and art. All the while, Catherine, the lady behind this brilliant project, has been taking the music and paintings to rural based communities across Scotland and the further north to help take culture and events wider than our city hotspots. I'll leave links down below if you're interested in finding out more about this project, documentary, collection of paintings and the album itself. I wanted to give a really big thank you to my wonderful Patreon members. Your support and encouragement and enthusiasm really goes such a long way to helping me make this channel possible. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you outside.